Jesus, what are you saying? Marry me. We'll go out tonight, find some place, chapel, justice of the peace, anything. We'll solve it all tonight. We'll, we'll, we'll settle it. It'll be just you and me, starting tonight. Marry me. I was kind of hoping that you might chicken out the last minute. Well, I, if I blew a chance like this, I couldn't live with myself. Uh, now that you've taken it, I don't know that I can live with you back right on us. Because you were there. I found Sheila because you were gone. What it takes to fulfill me, you don't have. Back. Sink monitor? Stupid thing's dripping again. Morning. Hi. Look, don't worry, I'm gonna get on it right after uh, this afternoon. Oh, uh, no, that's okay. No, no, now look, I'm the guy around the house, the guy in charge. Peter, I appreciate your wanting to help, but last time. Oh, the uh, clock radio. Okay, yeah. Want some breakfast? No, I'm not hungry. Look, and I got that alarm to work, remember? Okay. Yeah, every hour, a digital cuckoo bird. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I want somebody that's qualified. You know, that dripping would drive Dad crazy. You sure you don't want anything? No, that's okay. I'll get something off the canteen truck. I'm kind of in a hurry. Well, then why are you trying to fix the sink? Well, I was waiting on you. Well, I, I need to talk to you. I think I made a bad mistake. How's that? I think I remember the first thing you ever taught me was uh, not to be so judgmental. And, well, I had what I thought was some hard evidence. I made a judgment, and I think I was wrong. About Jason? Yeah. Yeah, Gil set me straight. He said that this uh, Sharon Landers, well, she's been using me to make you mad at Jason. I don't understand. You see, every time I went in to see her, she'd make sure that, well, I barged in or overheard something that I wasn't supposed to hear or see. Like when she was on the phone to her friend saying that Jason proposed to her, or when she was kissing Jason, you know. Mom, I was set up. I worried you for nothing, and I'm sorry. I accept your apology, Peter. But it may be that the truth is you did see something. Oh, great. Now you're going to be suspicious no matter what anybody tells you. No, I have discussed it with Jason. Openly, or was he apologizing? All right. Our talks haven't always been on the friendliest terms, but I do know he was seeing Sharon. He wasn't telling me. Look, you know, I, I don't have a claim on Jason. It wasn't his socializing I minded, it was just that he was keeping it from me. And uh, now the damage has been done. To a degree. If you've been misled, I can forgive Jason that much. Uh, now, aren't you judging him? No, I'm discerning, Peter. There's a difference. Why does that sound like a loophole? I'm not judging Jason's motives. I'm only recognizing the fact... Yeah, that he was seeing someone behind your back. It sounds like uh, you're judging him as a deceitful person. Peter, it's been very difficult for me to have any emotional involvement since your father's death. And I have fought being personally interested. I'm sorry if I'm oversensitive or if I'm being judgmental. Please forgive me. I was going to look out for you. I'll try to do better. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Mason. Yes, I filled out the application and I took the test. No, I, I'm not been notified. I got it? Praise God. Oh, that's fantastic. No, it's... When, when should I start? 
Oh, okay, I, I'll be waiting. I will. Thank you. <laughs> Mom, I got the job. Oh, it's so wonderful. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> do you know what? This is the first real job I've ever had in my whole life. <laughs> well, what do you say we sing a hymn of Thanksgiving? Uh, I think so. <laughs> what, Mama, Mama, why don't we sing it? I'll play the piano. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, there is something that I want to talk over with you. What, a new singing job or something? No, this is personal. Oh, since when have we separated professional from private, lady? This is very personal, Gene. Oh, really? I went to see Reverend Cruz a couple of weeks ago, and he recommended a family counselor for us. Carla, what are you talking about? The romance in our marriage. Our sex life. More specifically, yes. You went to a pastor about that? Something has to change. You could have at least told me first, Carla. I, Jean, I've tried to talk. I've made every attempt to talk to you in every way on any yeah, occasion. Sure. And he sent you to a marriage counselor. It was it? good. But there was only so much I could accomplish by myself. I thought we had this all taken care of. It's not like we don't touch each other anymore, for crying out loud. It's the way we touch, Jean. It's not close. It's not what it could be. Now, you know that I do all that I can to satisfy you. Now, that attention and that concern has to be returned to me. Well, Carla, look, bringing a stranger into this is not going to help matters. A stranger whose life is helping others in this exact area? I'm asking you to do it for me. Look. Haven't we weathered storms before? Now we can do this thing on our own. Come on. We haven't done much of anything on our own, Jean. Mama's seen us through. Jimmy's brought us together. And friends have given us a home, a new start, and a new job. But they're not going to be much help okay. in this area. Gosh. Okay, look. The marriage is going to be fixed piece by piece. And when the time is right, this piece here will be fixed. You're running, G. No, I'm not. I'm waiting. Uh-uh. You're doing exactly what you did when I left. Closing your eyes and hoping things will change. It has changed! I can't take you sitting here acting and treating me as though I'm a block of ice, woman. Come on. No, I appreciate your concern, but that's exactly what it is to me. Calculated pre-planned attempts to satisfy me like you're in some sort of competition and that's not what a woman wants not long ago you didn't know what you wanted don't hold it over my head i'm not and i'm glad that you found your new stability but carla come on you don't you think that the scars are still being healed because of your instability when we make love, I know that there's something missing, and I know that I'm holding back, and maybe there is some sort of competition that's going on. But there is no professional or clergyman that is gonna release that. What will, G? My trust in you. With time. Well, aren't you a picture of domestic servitude? Ben's not here. Great. That's the best news I've heard all day. Gil, I'm in the middle of a job I hate. And I've got ten things to do after this that I hate. Well, it sounds like uh, you need a diversion. Hmm? Out. Just came by to drop off these plans. Doctor's orders. Put them on the table. You know, I don't understand it. Girls doll themselves up and they lose something. But then when I take a look at you, uh, you know, in that nice casual t-shirt, brings a man out of me. That's not a man. That's a little boy. A dirty little boy. So why don't you just stand up and get out? Now, you're not going to throw me out over a yellow waxy buildup, are you? You're not funny. And you're not charming. But I'm so good looking. Not when I see the real you. Well, I do floors and windows and floss after every meal. And I've got a lot going for me that you'll ever admit to. But you know, I have got uh, one weakness. I'm a sore loser. <laughs> Count your blessings. Now just get out of here before I scream my head off, all right? 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm, but let's not tell Ben about this, okay? Mm. Mr. Davidson, hi. Uh, Lester's out for the day. Well, I've come to see you, Russ. Oh, well, then have a seat. I'd rather not. What I have to say shouldn't take too long. And what's that? Well, yesterday you spoke to a member of my staff. Jay? Yes. After a very demanding 14-hour day, you reprimanded her for taking a lunch break. Well, uh, her time card did say that she was supposed to be on duty. Did you happen to notice what the other time card said? There were very few yesterday, yes. Which might lead you to believe that we were understaffed at the time. We are meeting the standard personnel number. I do check these things. Well, in the first place, what personnel deems a viable quota of working nurses falls far short of what's really needed. So I was supposed to discuss hospital policy with your nurse first? You should have understood the stress and sacrifice under which she was working. And in the second place, she is just that, my nurse, under my supervision. And any problem you may have with her should be brought to me. Mrs. Davidson, it's not as if I fired the woman. She quit. I was only questioning what she was doing in the cafeteria when her time Nurses first. are not punch cards. I don't care what her clock said. I am talking about the personal fatigue of a human being, which accounts for her quitting. Oh, I understand. I'm sitting here twirling my mustache. You yell at me for being insensitive. It so is only a matter of following the proper lines of authority. Well, I'll tell you something, Mrs. Davidson. The patients of this hospital are human beings, too. And their personal needs are a little more pressing. And while we're on the subject, Mr. Lewis has not once, but more than once, walked by the nurse's station and seen patients ringing the buzzer with no nurses attending to it. Well, obviously, that's because they were in the cafeteria playing cards. Oh, you know, I am only saying what my boss tells me to watch for. Well, would you kindly look for something else? I will not have you looking for brownie points by playing the tough guy and reprimanding a woman who is your senior in age, <sighs> experience, and tact. That is what this is all about, isn't it? Well, it does come into play here. I mean, what you think is assertiveness is presumption. You've been here hardly a month, and already you've talked down to my senior surgical nurse. That is explained by the lines of authority. That still is no excuse for your tone and your behavior. You were insensitive in her situation. You were impolite in your manner. You leapfrogged her superiors. And if you think Lester Lewis is going to approve of that, it only shows how inexperienced you really are. I never knew a serious injury could be so much fun. Well, I hope we're making progress. Oh, I'm sure we are. I, you know, I can't feel anything yet, but uh, I'm really optimistic. Well, I've witnessed some amazing recoveries. Human body is an incredible machine. <laughs> yeah, some more incredible than others. What was that? Oh, I was just making a comment about how you're put together. I've never really gone in for the athletic type. Most of my men have either had money or well, whatever. Power? Charles Carpenter is very influential. Yeah, right. Power. I, I like that, too. I like when I go into the offices and all the secretaries will whisper, there's Mr. Carpenter's girl. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. Sometimes I don't think there's anything Mr. Carpenter wouldn't let you have or couldn't uh, overlook if he wanted to. Oh, cheer up. You got your power, too. <laughs> it's only strength. Only? Well, when I was younger, I... I used to really get off on that sort of thing. In fact, I lived in the gym. <laughs> My days were spent with training and tanning and tuna fish. <laughs> How unique. <laughs> yeah, well, I finally had to grow up. I found myself into physical therapy work. In fact, I already knew most of the terms anyway. And sometimes I feel like just a glorified masseur. Oh, well, I wouldn't work. Ow! Oh. Too hard? Yeah, be careful. Who do you think I am? Barbells or something? All I did was just do that. Oh, yeah, well, don't do it again. Well, uh, I think that'll be all today, Nancy. I think I'm finished. Um, why don't you get up? Hey, what is that, some kind of cruel joke or something? No, 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 no cruel joke. We call that positive thinking. 
it's not good to have everyone just get everything for you and do everything for you. Sometimes it's good for the mind to hear words like, um, let's go and uh, get up, you know? I wish I could figure you out. Why is that? I'm not so mysterious. Well, you know, when I first met you, I thought, well, you know, this uh, freewheeling Adonis type who's kind of stuck on himself, it would be good for passing the time. What do you think now? Well, I don't know. You're a little more curious than I thought. Or maybe, in other words, I'm a little smarter than I look? I can see how that uh, could become a problem. What is it about men, dear Alex, that makes them so power-hungry? Don't generalize. No, all men are not like that. True. Guess I just have an overabundance of that type in my own life. Is a man other than Russ giving you problems? Did I say that? You're not having problems with Jason, are you? Alex, look, I appreciate your concern, but all things considered, you would not make the best confidant. I wouldn't tell her so. That's not what I meant. <laughs> well, you can't tell me that Jason's too power-hungry. Now, think what I might about Jason. I'd never accuse him of being uh, too domineering. There's more than one way to be that. Didn't your mother ever tell you it's the sweet, timid girls who sink their hooks in the deepest? Oh, and it's the same way with the opposite sex. I'm hoping not. My dear, I can't tell you how heartbroken I am about your troubles with Jason. If this is the end of you two, I don't know what I'll do. No, oh, all right, stop that. It is not fair. I mean, here I am having all these problems with men when I need to find a capable male who can fix my sink. Well, what's wrong? Drip, drip, drip. Huh. Now, Peter wanted to take a crack at it, but I couldn't afford any more damage. I'll volunteer. You think you can fix it? You are looking at a man that has done double bypasses, and a kitchen sink wouldn't stand a chance against it. <laughs> Besides, I'll do it without being too pushy or too domineering. And when you're finished, you won't smugly tell me any idiot could have fixed it? I promise. Well, it's settled then. I'll, we'll call it a date. <clears throat> An appointment. Yeah, so your sister did Well, hi, I just got back. How was your golf game? Terrible. I bogeyed the last five holes. Oh, well, my day hasn't been going so great either. I need a ride home. Why? Did you lose your keys again? No, my, my keys are in my purse. Oh, please don't say you lost your purse. No, that's uh, probably in the front seat of the car. Probably. Ben, the car was stolen. 
from the school's parking lot? I'm afraid so. In broad daylight? <sighs> ben, someone grabbed my purse, got my keys, and took off. Have you called the police? Ben, I'm calling from the police station. B please don't say you're mad at me. No, no, I'm not mad. In fact, I'm glad this happened, because this settles everything. You are not going back to teach at that school.